السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a new video Today we're going to talk about the root of the nervous message How does it pass from the receptor to the effector arc First of all, let us recall the reflex arc which starts by a stimulus, either internal or external it can be physical or chemical this stimulus causes the um, um, nervous message to move from, from the receptor through the sensory neuron through uh, to the nerve sen center then uh, the motor neuron until the effector where the response can, uh, takes place but the question is how did they know that this is the root of the nervous message what are the experiments done to uh, prove that uh, these are the elements of the reflex arc and this is how the nervous message moves first of all we're going to study some experiments done on what we call a spinal frog a spinal frog is a frog that has uh, the brain destroyed they destroy her its brain and they keep the spinal cord intact and they uh, uh, make uh, several uh, experiments on it so as we see here uh, a quick anatomy of the frog's body these are the posterior poles of course these are the anterior poles and this is the right uh, posterior pole and the left posterior pole first of all the first experiment done was that uh, they pinched the right posterior pole which is like a stimulus here the pinching is a stimulus and uh, what happened is that the frog flexed its right posterior pole so the stimulus is done on the right posterior pole and the reflex or the reaction was done by the right posterior pole as well then they pinched the left posterior pole again it's the stimulus and the frog uh, flexed its left posterior pole then they did another series of experiment also on spinal uh, frogs uh, they uh, first of all they uh, applied anesthesia to the uh, right posterior pole you know the anesthesia is the chemical substance uh, used uh, in surgeries it's used to um, uh, put the patient uh, to sleep in order to make uh, the surgery on him for example so uh, after they uh, put uh, anesthesia to the uh, right posterior pole they also pinched it again which is a stimulus but this time nothing happened the frog didn't flex any pole not not the right not the left posterior pole a while they pinched the left posterior pole without any anesthesia they pinched the left posterior pole and the frog as usual flex the left posterior pole it made the same reaction as the previous experiment of course anatomically speaking all these experiments are done on the sciatic nerve of the frog which is a long nerve found in the uh, leg in the pole okay what can we conclude from the previous experiments first of all that each organ uh, or area has its own nerve it's innervated with its own nerve uh, hence the when we pinched the right posterior pole only the right posterior pole flexed while when we pinched the left posterior pole only the left posterior pole uh, flexed and the th second, second thing is that the local anesthesia stops the transmission of the nervous message in the area where it is applied and the evidence here that the local anesthesia only stopped the transmission in the right side in the right posterior pole but it didn't do any effect on the left posterior pole now if you want to remember the anatomy of the spinal cord we see here a real picture of spinal cord we see uh, out of the spinal cord what we call uh, roots okay these spinal uh, roots okay inside them there are the nerves if we cut them if we make a cross section as usual we see this is the dorsal or posterior uh, side and this is the ventral or anterior side so these roots here are called the dorsal roots while these are the ventral or anterior roots again this is a, a 
picture of the spinal cord. Here we have the po posterior or dorsal roots. Here we have the anterior or ventral roots. In the dorsal root, we have a ganglia. We call it sp spinal ganglia. We notice that the root is bulged a little. And here uh, we'll talk later that uh, this uh, ganglion is where the cell body is found. And of course, all these coming out when the two roots join together, we call them the spinal nerve. And now to another series of experiments uh, called bell magendi experiments or magendi bell experiments, referring to the scientists who uh, discovered uh, what these experiments show. Uh, they are uh, Francois Magendi and bell, Charles Bell. First, Magendi used to do his experiments on dead animals, but uh, the results weren't very clear. Then Charles Bell took the same experiments but applied them on living animals such as dogs, for example. Uh, of course, the experiments we're going to talk about are done uh, also on the spinal frog. Uh, the experiment is done by taking uh, a part, a cross section of the spinal cord and um, uh, doing some sections or cuts on them. Okay. Uh, as we said, this is the dorsal root and this is the ventral root. The first cut is done on the um, dorsal root or the posterior root. And we see here that section. After the cut is done, we have now two ends. This end is called the central end because it's connected. It's nearer to the nerve center. So it's called the center end. Uh, while this is the peripheral end because it's near to the periphery. Uh, the first thing is done was uh, a stimulus to the central end. When the stimulus is done here, uh, what happened is that the uh, frog flexed its right posterior paw. So here we see that the nervous message moved okay, uh, from this where this the site of stimulus and moved through the nerve to the spinal cord and made the reflex arc, com uh, completed the reflex arc where the frog uh, flexed its uh, posterior paw. But then they did another stimulus on the peripheral end this time. When they did the uh, reflex on the peripheral end, nothing happened. The frog didn't move anything. So uh, the significance here that uh, the nervous message starch, uh, starts or the direction of the nervous message has to take this route as we said and if there is something that blocks the nervous message it will not continue and nothing will happen so here the sensation is stopped the frog didn't sense any stimulus that's why there was no reflex Another experiment now was done, but this time the cut was done on the ventral root. And again, there is now a section. This is this side is the central end because it's nearer to the center, while this is the peripheral end. Now, again, they made a stimulus on the central end this time, but nothing happened. If we want to explain what happened here, the nervous message that's moving here was blocked by the section. It couldn't complete its way. That's why the frog couldn't do any reflex, couldn't do any action. But when they uh, made a um, stimulus on the peripheral end, okay, what happened here when they stimulated the peripheral end, the uh, frog flexed its posterior paw. This means that the nervous message moved like this through the, uh, the uh, ventral root and to the effector organ. These two experiments showed first that the posterior or dorsal roots contain the spinal nerves which are responsible for sensitivity and if we want to remember why since when we um, stimulated the central end here of the dorsal root there was liberation of the nervous message but when we uh, stimulated the peripheral end nothing happened so here uh, this means that here in this side the nervous message uh, sent from the sensory 
uh, or the receptor organ uh, moves in this way inside the dorsal root while the ventral or anterior roots contain the motor nerves which are responsible for motricity or movement or the response or the reaction okay and the evidence here is when we cut the ventral root uh, when the stimulus is done on the central end nothing happens but when we stimulated the peripheral end here we did a stimulus here there was a nervous message that was sent to the affected organ and the frog flex its right posterior paw so now to demonstrate what happens really inside the spinal nerves and uh, how is the uh, nervous message uh, how does it move we start from the skin which is the receptor which receives the stimulus and uh, changes into a nervous message here the nervous message moves through the sensory nerve found in the dorsal root here's the dorsal root we call this the afferent or sensory nerve because it carries the afferent message the afferent nervous message which is from the receptor to the nerve center again the nervous message moves through the anterior neuron which links the sensory nerve to the motor nerve and here we start with the ventral root where the afferent message uh, moves through the afferent or the motor nerve okay we have the motor nerve in the ventral root and the message continues to the affector organ where we have the reflex okay so again new words two new words afferent and afferent we can say afferent a neuron which is the same as the sensory neuron and afferent neuron which is, means coming back afferent neuron or the motor neuron the afferent or sensory nerve carries the afferent message which is the sensation the message of the sensation while the afferent or the motor nerve carries the afferent message which is responsible for the effect or the response and finally as a conclusion or summary for the bell magendi experiment what we learned from them is that about the root of the nervous communication the dorsal root of the spinal cord contains the sensory nerve which transmits the afferent nervous message from the receptor to the nerve center okay uh, so the dorsal root is responsible for the sensation uh, while the ventral root while the ventral root of the spinal cord contains the motor nerve which transmits the efferent nervous message coming from the nerve center to the effector. That would be everything for today. I hope the uh, information were clear. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to come back for new videos. Goodbye.